I love how he steps in with the one, two, three, then a two, five, two, three, two, one, hook behind the head, pulls him into an uppercut, then a nice three, four, three, step off center line, change the angle, three, beautiful. Hey, what did I say in the last video? Dimitri Bivol would win and retain his light heavyweight belt by decision, and he did so, not by majority, but he did it by unanimous decision over Gilberto Zerto Ramirez on Saturday in Abu Dhabi, and he did it in dominating fashion. Great, great, great fight. Uh, go ahead, like, subscribe if you haven't already, so you know every time I drop a video, and let's talk about it right now. He won on the judges' scorecards 118 to 110, 117 to 111, and 117 to 111. Took that shit easy. And my personal scorecard, I had it scored 10 to 2. I could see how Zerto could have won. I gave rounds 10 and round 3 to Zerto. Round 2 was a swing round. I know Chris Mannix gave him that round. I could see that as a swing round, so maybe 9 3, but I thought 9 3 or 10. Two were fair scores. And look, from, from top to bottom, he went out and executed all the things that I thought he would do. So let's go right into it and look at some of the good things that B-Ball did and why he's one of the top for top, uh, top pound for pound fighters on the planet. And the first thing I had mentioned in the last video was footwork, footwork, footwork. Like I said, Zerto is not slow, but B-Ball, he showed it against Canelo and he's showing you that again against Jean Pascal and then uh, Zerto Ramirez. His footwork is different. He gets off the center line, he cuts angles, he gets out of your line of sight, especially if you have that high guard and you're gonna have problems with a guy like him. And he controls the ring. And we saw that from the get-go. He established himself in the center of the ring and said, this is my space. Just like playing a game of chess. If you control the center of the board, you're gonna be a nightmare to deal with. And that's exactly what he did. Secondly, the speed difference was painfully apparent from the opening bell. You saw the jab, just that shotgun jab I was mentioning before. And Zerto, like I said, he has a good jab. He's not slow, but being the bigger guy against a guy like B-Wall, who's a lot quicker, the speed disparity was very apparent. And by establishing the middle of the ring and showing him that if you throw something to the body, you have three or four punches coming back and you're not going to be able to beat my speed or my timing. He was able to stand in the ring and walk the bigger man down. And that's something that we did not expect from the opening bell. He walked Zerto down. And we have never seen that. I repeat that. We have never seen that. We've never seen him go backwards, let alone for an entire fight. And then once he had him going backwards... He started landing punches in bunches. We saw after the first round, Zerto was having some, some nice moments in there. And then towards the end, he got a couple shots in and then bell rang and he came, gave him a little shoulder bump just to let him know like, yeah, this, you know what time it is right now. And that set the tone for the rest of the fight. And we just saw over the course of the fight, after round three, I would say, round four, you started to see B-Ball pick it up, and then from round four on, it was a clinic. Boxing one-on-one. The jab, the head movement, punches and bunches, different combinations, stepping off the center line, which I mentioned, Zerto, if he was going to have a chance in this fight, he was going to have to change angles and get around that peekaboo guard, which he did not do, and it really came back to haunt him in this fight. It was a boxing clinic by Dimitri B-Ball. Just highly impressed by what he was able to do. And let's take a look at the punch stacks here, uh, courtesy of CompuBox. You can see it on the screen here. Total punches landed, 131 for B-Vol to 107 for Zerto. Total thrown, 643 to 878. So B-Vol landed 20% of all of his punches thrown to Zerto's 12%, which is... There's a reason why B-Vol is one of the least hit boxers in the game right now. He's really, really good. I mentioned that before, and... It showed up again in this fight against a very technically sound fighter in Zerto. Like I said, he was very active with his jab. He was trying to work his way to the body. He just couldn't do it, man, because there was some, some fire coming back. Anytime he tried to open up, and that's why he was so hesitant 
the whole fight. And you look at the jabs landed, 64 to 38 uh, for B-Wall and Zerto respectively. 410 thrown for B-Wall, threw less but landed more. So 16% to 7% for Zerto. And then power punches landed, B-Wall landed 29% to 21%. But let's be real. When you look at that fight, some of the quote-unquote power punches that Zerto was landing, he landed a few good shots at times, especially in round 10. But a lot of his shots were not landing clean. They were not doing damage. Whereas the shots that B-Ball was landing, they were clean. They were precise. You could see Zerto at times getting frustrated at the fact that he was getting picked off at points. And if you saw the opening clip of this video, you saw the sequence that I mentioned. The 3-2, um, 3-2. The, the three, two, three, two. I mean, excuse me, 2-3, two, 2-5. Three, two, Two three two one comes into the body with like a little little check uppercut right uppercut, and then he switches it up goes two three two three then steps off to the left cuts the angle you know forty five degree angle off to the left and then comes back with a little chopping uh, uh, hook like just the boxing IQ those are the moments that stuck out to me. Walking forward, even when neither guy was landing, he was walking forward and applying mental pressure, staying active, forcing Ramirez to move backwards and go to the spots where he wanted Zerto to be at. And that's what I saw, and I think that's what the judges saw as well. So, you know, he just executed his game plan to a T. Great fight. Now, what's going to be on the horizon moving forward for B-Ball? Um, he moved up from 8-7 to seven on the pound-for-pound pound list. Uh, according to e ESPN, um, uh, and Beta Better BF, who has the other three belts, he's sitting at number nine on the pound for pound list. Now we don't know if we're going to get that fight. That's the one that everybody wants to see coming up. That's the one that B-Wall says he wants. But there's a lot of politicking and negotiations to go on with that. So he's now sitting in a spot where he has two huge fights. So you have Better BF, who has the WBC. WBO, IBF crowns. So whoever's the winner of that fight between the two will be undisputed at 175. However, it better be if it's going to be tied up with another fight with with a fight with Anthony Yard early next year. B-Ball might have to take that rematch with Alvarez. And he talked about this post-fight. He said, I proved myself that I could beat, beat the best guy in the world. And now I beat another guy who doesn't know what losing is, i.e. Zerto Ramirez, who is now 44-1. and one. He says, I have another goal. I want to be undisputed champion. But everything is not up to me. It doesn't depend only on me who I fight next. We have to agree as a team on which is better for us. But I hope they will listen to me and what I want. Now, ask if you wanted a rematch with Canelo. If Better BF isn't able to fight until later on in 2023, he said, of course, but I'm like a kid who has a dream. An important part here that he mentioned, I want to go to this dream. My heart wants it, but my brain and my mind understand how things are going. He knows his business. He knows the business. He's not a fool. So he said, I, I want to fight for another belt, but if I don't have this chance in four or five months, I will take another fight. So. We'll see how this play plays out. Hopefully, he gets the fight with Better BF sooner rather than later. But if you actually have the rematch with Canelo, I'll give you my thoughts on that in another video. I might have mentioned my thoughts on what would happen in a rematch uh, would be before, but I will definitely give you my thoughts on that. It's pretty straightforward. There's really no straight up and down, no special effects. It's really not that, that uh, complicated <laughs> how I think the second fight will play out. But that being said, you beat Canelo Alvarez, who's one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the sport. And then you come back and beat Zerto, who's been calling you out at 175 ever since he's moved up. And he's undefeated. He don't know what losing is like. And then you come in and not only win against the bigger fighter, who's very technically sound and a well-rounded fighter, but you dominate him in the fashion you did. I mean, he might be a clear-cut candidate for a fight of the year, fighter of the year. For 2022. I mean we only have. What. 45 days left. 50 days left. I don't see who's going to be. Showing, giving a better showing than B-Ball did. In these past two fights. I mean. 
he he beat two of the best guys out there. So pound for pound. So that I I think great job, Evol. It's really great to see him finally getting the opportunities and then now getting his just due after really being in the shadows. Nobody really knew about him. But like I said, I knew about the guys like Bivol, Better BF, Shabransky, who is no longer really in the conversation. But I remember when those guys were coming up and they were the next young Lions. So to see both of these guys getting their shine now, especially Bivol, it's just great to see. And hopefully those two can clash and hash it out for who's the best at 175. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. And before I end this video, I want to switch over briefly to talking about some of the fights on the horizon. Namely, the potential fight between Lomachenko and Devin Haney, which may be taking place sooner rather than later. Now, there was a convention, uh, the WBC's annual convention, uh, yesterday around 2.30, and uh, Suleiman was talking about, you know, who's Devin Haney going to fight next and what's going to happen with Lomachenko. So... Allegedly, they're in negotiations to get this fight done. So I would love to see that. That's really one of my dream matchups. Now, we'll see how Lomachenko, and I mentioned it in the last video, we'll see how he looks moving forward because he looked a little rusty. And Devin Haney's been on fire. So, you know, I, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens if this if this, this fight takes place. But allegedly, that's under the underway, which is great. Um, after Loma's win over Jermaine Ortiz, and hopefully it happens. And then additionally, the WBC ordered Shakur Stevenson to face Isak Cruz in a finals eliminator bout for the WBC lightweight world title, which would be the winner of potentially Haney and Lomachenko. So it's, it's, it's great. So if Haney and Lomachenko don't fight, I would guess that this eliminator bout would take place and then the winner of that bout would face Haney regardless of who Haney faces in, in, in the interim. So he has some heat and some smoke coming his way. And I think he's a tough young lion. I don't think he's ready for it. I think he thirsts for that battle, man. Like a sand thirst for war, man. You know, you know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know, and I'm, I'm just so happy that some of uh, these fights are being made. I, I like Secure, Secure uh, Stevenson for this fight, but Isaac Cruz is a tough customer. And we saw that with his fight with um, uh, Tank Davis. <laughs> Tank, you know, he had all he could handle with Isaac Cruz. Isaac Cruz is, he's called a pit bull for a reason. He fights like it. I'm going to tell you that much, man. That guy just, you throw the whole kitchen sink at him, and he just keeps walking forward. So... That's going to be an interesting fight. Let me know what you guys think about that. Do you think Lomachenko is going to uh, be fighting Haney coming up? And would you be excited about seeing the winner of Shakur Stevenson and Isaac Cruz to fight the winner of the Haney-Lomachenko fight? So we'll see what happens there. That's all I got for you now. But great weekend of, of boxing. Hopefully they stop dicking around and make the fight eventually between Bud Crawford and Earl Spence Jr. But who the hell knows? At least we're getting other good fights at the moment uh leave a like leave a comment and make sure you stay tuned for the next video and talk to y'all next time peace